here we are again. G'day all you beautiful beat loving souls. This is Electronics back with another beat making tutorial on how to make your first beat in Ableton Live 11 for beginners who have very little to no experience in music production. So in this video, I'm going to be expanding on the last tutorial, which I hope you enjoyed on how to make a simple beat in Ableton Live 11, where we focused on the fundamentals of beat making. And I'm going to be using the exact same Ableton project that I used in that tutorial, which is available to download for free from my Patreon, which is also free to join. But if you do appreciate the gift of this tutorial and the Ableton project that I'm providing, you also have the option of making a donation. So if you wanna follow along with this tutorial and you wanna follow the steps that I'm sharing with you today, feel free to go and download that template. You'll find the link to that template in the description of this video. But hopefully now you've been practicing how to make some chords, melodies, drums and bass lines, and you're now ready to take your music from the session view over into arrangement view. And that is exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you today, how to take your music from the session view to arrangement view, where we focus on song structure, including intros and outros, along with basic transitional effects, because apparently that's what you all want to learn about. So here I am giving you the goods today. But don't get too excited because this is going to be a very basic tutorial. We're not going to be adding all the bells and whistles to create some kind of epic you know, piece of music ready for release. Just think of this learning phase of your music production journey as the wax on and wax off phase. Fast wash all the car. So it might be a little bit bland and it might be a little bit boring at times, but trust me, learning these basics is going to help you to develop into the epic music producer that you want to be. And everyone kind of starts here, this very basic level. So don't be too impatient. Remember, dear, no question. Just chill out and enjoy the polishing of the cars for now. Wax on because sooner or later you're going to be driving the car and you're going to be, you know, creating epic soundscapes and epic productions. But for now, we're just starting at the beginning. Wax on and wax off. The purpose of this tutorial is really just to introduce you to some basic concepts about song arrangement, song structure, and how to transition from one section to another. And we are going to do that through creating a short one-minute song arrangement. So we're not even going to be creating a whole song just yet. But learning the art of creating short one minute song arrangements is still very useful because you can use these skills to apply it to creating beats for beat videos to share on your social media. And it's also a stepping stone to working towards creating a full song ready for commercial release. So pull up a posse and get comfy open up your Ableton session, download the template, and let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so we have the Ableton project open, which is the project that I used in the last session, the last tutorial on how to make a simple beat in Ableton Live. And as you can see, we created some chords, which are here. We have our MIDI notes all programmed in for these chords. Then we have some drums. Then we also have the melody and the bass line. All right, so step number one is to get these clips into the arrangement view. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on the first clip, hold down shift and click on the last clip. All right, that highlights all of the clips. Now we're going to click and hold the first one, which is the chords click, hold and drag. And you see how they're kind of hovering over here. And then we're gonna hit tab on our typewriting keyboard. Boom, and that takes us to the arrangement view. Then we're just going to drop them in here at bar one. And there we have all of our clips here in our arrangement view. Now you'll notice that they're grayed out. To ungray them, we need to click on this little orange button over here. And now we are fully ready to go in arrangement view. So the second step is to copy these clips over 
because we want to have one minute of song. So we highlight all of our clips. We can either go Command A, which highlights them all, or we can click on them and hold down Shift, and that also highlights them all. Either one will work, doesn't matter really. So now we want to hit Command D to copy over the clips to equal one minute of song time. And boom, now we're just hitting over one minute. How do I know it's over one minute? Well, down the bottom here, we have the time markers on the timeline. So as you can see, this is one minute marker here and we are just hitting over one minute. Now we're going to take our looper and stretch it across all of the clips. This thing here is called a looper. Just for some more information, just an FYI, the numbers up here represent the bars of the music on the timeline. Cool. That is step number two. Done. Okay, step number three. We are going to add some locators on our timeline to create a basic and rough guide of our song structure. So now that we have our looper selected, we are going to go to create, add locator. And we're going to call this one the intro. That is not how you spell intro. There we go. Now we want to go to bar nine and add in our second locator, create, add locator. And let's just call this section one. Then we want to go to bar 17 and add in our second, not second, third, third locator. Okay, so section two is what we will call that. Oh, dang it. Okay, and then our final section, which will be here at bar 25, add locator, and we're gonna go section three. Oh, killy dokily. We have a very rough guide for our song structure, and you might find that, you know, if you put in your locators, maybe it'll change later on down the track. Who knows, you know? It just depends on how things pan out. All right, so. We have our locators added in. That is the completion of step three. Now the fun part, we need to start, I guess, arranging this one minute song so that we can have it sound the way we like it. No, that's not even a good explanation. All right, so step four is to start arranging the song. And the way that we do that is by taking out sounds and adding them back in over time. And this is so that we can keep the composition interesting and we don't give away everything all at the beginning. We want to build up to a moment in the one minute composition. So obviously in the intro, I don't wanna have all my sounds happening all at once because where do I have to go after that? So I want to just take away some of these sounds. So I definitely don't want the drum kit in this intro. So I'm gonna highlight the clip and hit zero on my typewriting keyboard. Boom, that deactivates the clip. I definitely don't want the melody happening at the beginning either. So I'm gonna zero that out. And I also don't want the bass. Now in the second half of the intro, again, I don't want the melody and I don't want the bass, I think. It might change, we'll see. Now for the drum kit, I do want to start introducing some of the elements of the drum kit. So what I might do is take out the hats, take out the kick. I only want the claps for this first half of the intro. Okay. Now the way that I muted these notes is I clicked on this note here of the piano roll, the white note. By clicking on this note, it's going to highlight all of the MIDI notes in the drum kit which is this hat, and then I just hit zero and that toggles the note on and off. Basically zero is, you know, the go-to for deactivating anything in Ableton. So zero and then the same thing with kick, I just clicked on that and I hit zero. So that's how you can deactivate notes and also MIDI clips in Ableton. Alrighty then. So we have basically in the intro our chords and just the claps happening. 
Now, in section one, I do want to start introducing more of the drum kit, but not the full drum kit. So we are going to go with just the kick and the claps this time. So I want to get rid of the hi-hats, so I'm going to click on that piano roll note and hit zero. Okay, so we're now we're introducing the kick. I still don't want to have the melody, but we do want to also introduce the bass line at this point as well. Then what we're going to do is take out the melody for the second half of section one because I definitely don't want it there. And then we're going to introduce the full drum kit here in the second half of section one. Okay, and then in section two, I want to simmer things down again, kind of like a breakdown. As you notice in some songs, there might be a bit of a breakdown where the music simmers down and then it builds up to something again. And that's what I kind of want to do in section two is just simmer things down so we can build up to all of the sounds in section three. And that's where we want to introduce all of the different instrumental layers in section three. All right, so basically we're going to take out, we're going to go back to just the claps, right? Just the claps in the first half of section two. And then we want to introduce, I think, the hats. So I'm going to take out the kick and we're going to have the hats come in on the second half of section two. And we also don't want the melody on the first half of section two, but we want to start introducing the melody on the second half of section two into section three. All right, and that is all I'm going to do. Basically, everything that we wanna hear in section three is already there, so we don't need to do anything to that, to that, to that. Oh yeah, to that, we don't need to do anything more to that. It's already done. All right, so now that we have our basic song arrangement, let's have a little listen to how it sounds. It's a banger, y'all. It's a banger. All right. Well, now that we've finished a rough sketch of our arrangement, we're going to go on to transitions and adding in some different risers to our composition. But you're probably wondering about outros. What about the outros in this song structure? Where is the outro? Well, stay tuned because later on in this video, I'm going to talk about outros and what you can do for that. But for now, let's get into adding in some transitions. All right, so step number five is we're going to add in some transitions. Now, the purpose of transitions is to just create a smooth transition from section to section. It also lets the listener know, no, no, lets the listener know. It also lets the listener know that a change is coming up and it also can create tension and release as well. So... We are going to go in and add in some different risers that I have saved here in my user library. And this is what you can do with your composition. So whenever you're creating a track is that you can create some folders in Ableton of different sounds that you'd like to use in that track. And the way that you do that is you right click here and you choose new folder and then you can name it whatever you want. Name it what ever you want no ah, there we go and then you can just drag in the sounds that you want to use in any track that you're working on and i actually highly recommend to do this 
before you start actually creating a song is to do a bit of pre-production and decide on what kind of sounds do I want to have in this song? What kind of sound palette do I need? And just start throwing in, you know, different samples or sounds or instruments, you know, create a bit of a sound palette for your music production before you get started. It just helps with workflow and it helps with organization and it helps with efficiency because if you have all your sound palette all ready to go in a folder or, you know, organized here in collections even, then when you're creating your track, you don't need to be going out and searching for hours on end for different like samples or instruments and things like that. It's all ready to go and you're just going to be able to just create, create, create and you're not spending hours like oh, trying to find the right sound because you've already done that work. So that's just a little tip for you in terms of pre-production. If you want me to go more in depth than that, let me know in a comment below and I'll do a tutorial on that and show you my process of my pre-production and what I do before I create a track and uh, yeah so yeah just let me know in a comment but getting back to the risers that we're going to be putting in this song so I have a little folder here called risers and I have around four risers these are some of my favorite risers that I like to use in my music and obviously you know you want to have a variety of different risers because you know you don't want to be using the same like sample over and over for the simplicity of this tutorial I will be using the same sample over and over but you know I've got a few here to choose from which will add in some variation here but you know generally speaking you want to have a variety of different like risers you can pull from that will suit the composition all right, now that that little spiel is over, let's get into putting in some risers. So I definitely know that I want a riser at the beginning. We need to create some like shh sound. Cool, and then I also want to have a riser here for when we introduce the kick. Right, so let's put a reverse symbol here. Perfect. So it just gives us a little intro to when we hear the kick for the first time. And then what I'd like to do is add in this riser again. So we're gonna use that riser in the breakdown and then I also would like to put, actually, let's put one more here. Belly rumbling. Cool. And then we definitely want to have a build up of tension going into the section three. So the next riser that I want to use is this one. And this one. All right, so we have these two risers coming in at the second half of section two. And that's pretty much, I think, all of the risers I wanna use. So let's have a listen to see what that sounds like. Okay, I really don't know why this does that. I 
cuts out there. That's so bizarre. Anyway, let's just like cut it there then. There we go. And that completes adding in our transition for this composition. Now, obviously, as you progress in your music production skills, you can get more complex with your riser effects and you can create, you know, percussive risers such as snare risers or different percussive rhythms to transition into different sections. But when you're just starting out, using risers such as white noise risers and reverse cymbals are perfectly fine for practicing and understanding where you need to be placing these risers to create either tension in your musical piece or to help your musical piece to release and simmer down or build up anticipation to another section in your composition. And that's really the major purposes of risers is to just create that tension and release in your music. All right, so now it's time to have a little bit more fun. We've had enough of wax on, wax off for the day. You learned plenty. I learned plenty. I learned how to sand your decks maybe. I've waxed your car, paint your house, paint your fence. I learned plenty. Right? And what I'd like to do is give you a few little extras of some things that you could do to spice up your composition. So the first thing that I'd like to do is change some of the instrumental layers. You know, this piano sound is getting a bit bloody bland. So we want to spice it up a little. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this track. So highlight the track by clicking on it, hit command D. And I'm going to add one of my favorite instruments, which is called the orchestral pad. I absolutely love this pad sound and I use it in a lot of my compositions. So what I'd like to do is take these pads down an octave. So down to C3, uh, sorry, C2. And we're going to duplicate that over for the intro and we're gonna take out this piano sound for the intro. So we're just gonna have pads. Okay, so now that we have our beautiful pads, mm, it's just so soothing. I love it. Okay, what we're going to do is change the sound of the piano to one of my other favorite instruments, which is called a stab pluck. This is another instrument I use a lot in my releases, but we're going to actually change the rhythm of this sound. So actually, and we might need to change the octave as well. Let's do that first. Let's go up to C4. Oops. Yes. Okay, cool. So we're going to command D this across and command D that. We want it to be there. Sounding good. Duh. And we need to turn it down. It is a little bit too loud. Cool. I'm going to solo that so we just hear this chord. Amazing. We're going to do the same for all of these. Dope.
All right, let's have a listen to what that sounds like. There you go. So it's just adding in some nice rhythms here to our piece. I'm going to command D and copy that across. And we're going to take out the pads here on the chords. Okay, now I want to copy these across actually to all of that. And then we're going to take out the pads from section two. Okay, so now that we have our chords sorted, we have some new pads and some new plucky chords. I would like to change the sound of my drum kit. So I'm going to go to one of my favorite kicks that I like to use. And we're going to grab it from my first single that I released this year, which was called Ocean Friends. And if you haven't checked that out, follow me on Spotify if you want to hear that track. I'm going to use this Akando kit. So we're going to drag this one down. Okay. Now we have a new kick on our drum kit. And I actually want to change the clap to a more brighter clap. So let's see if I can find one of my favorite claps. Not really. Let's go to another project. Earth Arcadia was my second single. If you haven't checked out that, head over to my Spotify. I like this clap. Let's do the party clap. Woohoo! Party! All right, so let's have a listen to what that sounds like now. I might actually turn down the kick. All right, so that's our drum sorted. So we changed some of the sounds of the drum kit, which is cool. Now, we definitely want to change the sound of the melody, which is played by the grand piano. We need to get rid of that. All right, we need some of these plan, plan flutes. It's We need some of these pan flutes. All right, well, we're not going to find it in there, are we? We're going to need to go to my instruments and double click on that. It will bring it onto my track. And now we have the pan flute here. And holy crap, it's way too loud again. All right, that's good enough for now. I'm going to leave the bass instrument as it is. So let's hear what this sounds like. So we have now changed some of the instruments. Now, just for a little bit more fun, just to throw a bit more spice in the pot, we are going to just fiddle around with some of the effects. So what I would usually do is put a crap load of reverb on a lot of my instruments. So I'm going to put that on the pan flute. I also want to filter in my melody before we get to section three. So let's go to audio effects and let's go to auto filter. Click on the filter resonance. Make sure this is turned on. And now I'm going to automate the filter. So we don't want the full sound of the flute coming in in our breakdown. We just want it to slowly increase in frequencies. And that's actually a really good way to create anticipation for this sound that's going to be introduced in section three. And it's also a good way to create, you know, this smooth transition in introducing a new sound. You can always filter it out and slowly introduce it, you know, into its full frequency range when you hit the section that you want to hit. So that's just a little technique that you can also add to your little toolbox. And then... 
We also want to add some reverb to our drums just a little bit because when drums are recorded, they're usually recorded in a room that has natural reverb. So you just want to add a tiny little bit of reverb to your drums, not too much. But if you want to add a crap load of reverb to particular sounds on your drum kit, you can also go to your effects, type in reverb, and then you can drag this reverb plugin down to, let's say, the clap. I want to put some reverb on my claps. I also like to sometimes put a big decay on some of my sounds. It's a bit too much. We won't do that today. That's good enough for me. So just showing you that, yeah, you can add in like different effects onto each, you know, sound on the drum rack. Sometimes I also like to add in saturator just so that we can hear that clap all right the other thing that I would like to add in some reverb on would be the pads Amazing. I don't really want to add in any reverb on these chords. The bass, we're going to leave. We're not going to add any reverb to that. The other thing that I want to do actually, just as a little bit of an extra, is we're going to change the rhythm of the drum kit. So we're going to have, so for section three, we're going to have the drum kit playing something different. So we're going to have the claps on two and four. And what this is going to do is just take us into a little bit more of a full-time rhythmic feel for the section three, which is, you know, a little drop here. So I want to also add in a few more kicks to give us that full-time feeling. Oops. We want to move this kick back here. Maybe a couple there. Oops, that doesn't go there. Goes on number two. That's cool. So we're just changing up the kick and the clap pattern here on our drum kit to give it a different feel as we hit that. So everything's kind of quite chill here, you know, and then we're going to build up to this section three. Now, what I'm noticing is my kick is a little bit too quiet now, so I might bring it up. So we're just adjusting the gain here on our kick sound. So just to talk about outros a little bit, obviously with this particular song structure, we don't really have an outro, but you could consider section three as the final kind of like section or outro of this short one minute song arrangement. However, if you wanted to add in an outro to this section, you could just end it with, let's say, these chords. So you could end it with one bar of these pad sounds. So we actually might go back to the low octave of the pads. And Command C, Command V. So, and we could just add in a riser effect to symbolize that we... 
are heading into our outro. So let's see what that sounds like. So just something simple like that for an outro, you know, you basically want to strip things back again when you're heading back out to the outro. You know, instead of having an outro like that, you could also just like, you know, maybe add in one more of these and then just slowly fade out the track over time. So just fade out the volume. And so that could sound something like this if you just open up the master and you go to mixer track volume and then you basically just bring down that volume and that's another way to transition and fade out to an outro a lot of songs popular songs do you know finish their tracks in that way where they have all the music playing and they're just like fading it out over time or you might want to actually filter it out so instead of doing a volume fade you might want to add a auto filter onto your track and just slowly filter out the track towards the end <laughs> Maybe not that low, maybe about here. And that's another way to basically create an outro for your song. Yeah, so that's a second option. You can just like fade out your track to finish it off. Or you can go with the first option, which is to bring back in maybe the intro, you know, and fade it out like that. That's another option to basically do an outro yeah and just other little different things that you can do as well for example here before we get to the breakdown we might want to just take out the drums for the last part of this section one where we maybe bring in a riser again here Or well, actually, not that one. What what if we, you know, choose this vocal? So we just take out the drums for this one bar. And let's add some reverb onto these risers. So that's kind of like a nice way to, you know, create anticipation for something is to drop out like a certain instrument one bar before the next section comes and that's just like a little effect that you could do. And it might not be the whole kit that you drop out. It might just be, let's say, the hats for the last four bars. So we want to just do these closed hats, turn them off and in the last bar it would sound like this and that just sort of helps to create that anticipation again so yeah they're just uh, a couple of ideas for an outro of your track all right so another little effect that we can do is add a delay to our clap now this is just gonna add an extra little kind of texture to our composition so i'm going to go to audio effects and i'm going to choose delay and i'm going to bring this one down here to my claps now what you can do is you can actually automate the delay to come on and off so basically i'll turn the delay off and okay so what we want to do is turn on the delay here Let's just see how it sounds. I might need to change it, but we'll see. Mm. Let's see if I can bring it up to there. It, 
works okay there. I mean, instead of maybe putting it there, why don't we try and put it here instead on this last kind of bar. <laughs> So putting it there sounds really cool. I think maybe, I think having it come in here before section three might work as well. We'll have a listen. No, you can't really hear it. Yeah, so you can't really hear it there because of these risers. So you either have to turn down the risers as a compromise to bring in those claps and have them be heard. Or you can just opt to maybe choose a different spot, maybe like here. Yeah, so that's another option adding in effects and automating when they come on and off. Yeah, so let's have a listen. I like that. I think this one is a little bit too busy with that open hi-hat there. So I'll probably turn that one off when we have this clap here, when we have that delay on. I think that's just a lot more cleaner, keeps it less busy. Next step is we want to take out these pads. I have no idea why those pads are there, but maybe I accidentally put it there, you know, didn't realize and I'll bring the pads back in here. This time though, we want to filter these pads in. So we don't want to hear them straight away. So we're going to automate this filter so that the pads are slowly creating anticipation until we hear them in full force in section three. And then what we also want to do is create a little auto filter automation here in section three, just at the end of the first four bars, because we are repeating this section. And usually if you're going to have a double chorus like this, you might change something or add something new on the second half so it's a little bit different. But for now, we're just going to keep it like this. Keep it simple. All right, so now let's have a listen to our masterpiece. We've got to hear the whole thing and what it sounds like. Shakalaka, there we have it. All right, so there are just a few little extra things that you can do to spice up your composition. Just change some of the sounds out, you know, change some of the rhythms and give it that variation. And yeah, just make it sound more luscious by adding in some reverbs and things like that. And there's obviously a lot more that you can do, but we want to keep this very simple to begin with because there's a lot that goes into music production and producing a song ready for release. And it can be very overwhelming, but hopefully I've kept this very simple for you and just introduce you slowly to a few different concepts and things that you can do. And hopefully it's going to help you to get started in your music making journey. And by adding in like things like a little bit of reverb or saturation, you can develop your ear to hear how sounds change when you add on these different effects. And that's really important to developing your hearing. 
is understanding what and how the sound is affected with different effects and mixing plugins. So I highly, you know, encourage you to practice just a simple short one minute song arrangement and experiment with different instruments, experiment with different effects such as auto filters, reverbs and things like that. And experiment with mixing up your composition with different rhythms and changing up the rhythms, especially on your drum kit or your chords. And that way you can experiment with creating different variations within your short one minute song arrangement. So there's a lot in here that's going to help you to develop musically in terms of music production, developing your hearing and helping you to, you know, get used to getting around in Ableton as well and learning how Ableton works, especially if you, you know, start creating your own little user libraries and folders and things like that. It's just a really helpful, practical exercise you can do on a weekly basis is just start practicing creating short one minute compositions. And if you can get one minute sounding awesome, then you're ready to keep building on that and you'll just get better and better from there over time. Now, obviously this is the wax on, wax off phase of learning music production, but if you wanna dig a little deeper, you can check out my other tutorials up on this playlist here or by the link in the description where I go a little bit deeper into music production and it's more for the intermediate to advanced music producers. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the description of this video and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if there's a tutorial that you want to see, let me know and I will do my best to, you know, create another tutorial for you. All right, well, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope this helps you out in your music making journey and I will see you in the next video.